Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Tuesday, July 26th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I am delighted that you are part of my life as well. Um, well, today is Tuesday. It means there is Celebrate Recovery for men and for women at 6.30 p.m. at Full Gospel Center in their sanctuary near Arlington High School. Celebrate Recovery is a program for uh, hurting people, a discipleship program for hurting people. And all of us, we all hurt uh, at different times. We're hurting. We deal with our habits that we just can't seem to get over or our hangups, anything that we, we can't seem to get over. Um, Celebrate Recovery helps us uh, with uh, through a group setting, working through those things, uh, supported by our brothers or our sisters uh, in in growing in Christ. I want to encourage you. It's a great program. Uh, it's at uh, there's one for men, one for women. Six thirty p.m. at Full Gospel Center in their sanctuary. On Sunday, I preached out of Second Timothy chapter two verses fourteen through. 19 and it talks there about um about uh sort of false christianities i i, I that's how i uh, sort of unpacked it was false christianities uh that uh, that that their teaching is irreverent babble it's a quarreling over words um and it's uh it, it spreads like gangrene and it rips people away it overturns ruins their faith uh the passage says and yesterday i mentioned that uh, one of my favorite, and I don't have favorite people in the church, but one of my favorite people in the church came up and, uh, and asked me, you know, uh, when is the time to call out those false Christianities uh, publicly? You know, isn't that part of the job of the pastor to call out those false Christianities? And I took that to heart. I thought about it uh, overnight. And uh, yesterday's devotional, I called out four false Christianities that, uh, I, that I, I think are particularly have hooks in us as, uh, as, as 21st century Christians here in the United States. Two from the left, two from the right, and two from the left. Which one's left, which one's right? This is your right. That's your, no, it's my right. Your left. Anyway, um, so yesterday I called out four uh, false Christianities, uh, perversions of Christianity. Um, but what about calling out particular Christians? And I talked yesterday about how we kind of are in this um, call out culture right now where people are being destroyed by, uh, their lives are being destroyed by sort of publicly calling them out for infractions of, uh, it's not usually about Christianity, although the Christian world does this too. Um, calling out people for, for infractions of racism or sexism, calling people out for things that they've said in the past, grabbing their tweets, feeling like they're, they're somehow they're not kind of towing the right line. And, and, you know, we, I think a lot of Christians condemn that when we see it in sort of public life, but then we do the same thing in Christian life. When we, we see somebody who has a belief, a Christian belief that is perhaps not quite exactly what we believe or we see in scripture that, that is not quite right. Um, it's not about one of those central core tenets uh, of the Christian faith that we've talked about on Sunday and I talked about yesterday, but it is it is something that, uh, that that is important to us. And should we call them out publicly? Should we should we call out other Christians publicly and uh, and 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 you know point out their um, point out their mistakes publicly? Um, well, I, I want to talk about that today because I think it's important. And, and there's a distinction between whether you are a Christian leader responsible for the soul of the person that you're that we're discussing um, or whether you're uh, just a brother or sister who loves them and cares for them there's also a distinction about whether that person is a christian leader so there's there's different distinctions that need to be made but i want to just sort of lay down the groundwork for for what that looks like in general okay and then we'll, we'll talk a bit more specifics i think in tomorrow's video but uh, here's what the Apostle Paul says in the book of Galatians, and this seems to be talking to Christians in general. It says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he's nothing, <laughs> he deceives 
himself. Uh, notice the sort of broad language there. Uh, brothers, and that could be translated brothers and sisters, so it's not just talking about to men there. But it says, if anyone is caught in any transgression, anyone is caught in any transgression. So this is sort of a broad, how do we deal with, with sins or, or, or failures of any kind? Um, what the apostle says here is, you who are spiritual should look to restore the person in a spirit of gentleness. That's the point. The point is restoration and the, uh, the means of, the, the way of doing it is gently, right? The, the, the objective is restoration and the way that you do that is gently. Because frankly, when you deal harshly with people, restoration uh, you know, almost entirely ceases to be an option. Uh, restore him gently. Um, now it does say, you who are spiritual. Now you who are spiritual could be a reference to uh, the leadership of the church, uh, the elders of the church. Um, it's certainly talking about uh, people with sort of a more of a spiritual maturity. Um, so when, you're, when you see a brother or a sister caught in a transgression of some sort, um, one question to ask is, uh, am I the right person to do this restoration, uh, right? Am I the right person? If not, what can I do to support that process, right? So what can I do? Am, am I, you who are spiritual, am I a person with spiritual maturity sufficient to help guide this person over this, this, this bump? Now, there's a warning here, right? Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Jesus talked about this with the parable of, of the, the speck in your brother's eye and the log in your own eye, right? Uh, you gotta look to yourself first. There's gotta be humility when you're coming. So gentleness and humility are both part of any kind of spiritual confrontation. And he talks about here that we need to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Um, part of this, so we, we don't see ourselves as judges over this person, but as a co-laborer, we're going to bear their burdens. And maybe they believe what they believe because they're bearing a particular burden that, uh, that we can help with, right? So we're going we're gonna to fulfill the law of Christ in that way. And it says uh, there's always the, the, the possibility of, of self-deception, of thinking that we're, we're higher up or better than, than we ought to. Oh, so there's a lot of stuff going on there, right, about restoration. What there isn't there is this idea that if anyone is caught in any transgression, you should publicly shame them into following uh, the, the, the course of Christ, right? That's not the way that Paul uh, calls us to deal with people. Now, there is a public aspect of it, and, you know, we'll, again, we'll talk about that uh, in the next video, but um, there is a, a, a public aspect of it at a certain point, right? There are points at which uh, there needs to be a public proclamation that this person is rejecting every uh, attempt at helping them to grow past this particular issue that they're, they're dealing with. They would rather have that sin than have fellowship with the people of God. And so they, they get disfellowshipped, right? Um, we're, that is a worst case scenario kind of thing. You, that only happens in the, the greatest of extremes and it's, it's decided on by the leadership of the church, which hopefully is spiritually mature people who have followed all the other thing, other processes before they get there. But uh, um, here's Paul talking about his way of dealing with um, you know, sin in the church. He says, I, Paul, myself, 2 Corinthians 10, 1, I, Paul, myself, entreat you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Notice what he highlights about Jesus there. I, who am humble when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I'm away. Yeah, he's going to go on and says a lot of other stuff, but, um, but it's interesting. He describes himself as humble when face to face with you, but bold when I'm away. Ah, it is much easier to call out someone's sin when you're at a distance, right? Uh, it's easier to be bold about sin at a distance. It's easier to be bold about other people's sins rather than your own. It's easier to be bold about the sins of people you don't know personally than the sins that you, of the people you do know personally. Um, that is human nature, right? Paul says, look, I am humble and meek when I'm face to face just like Jesus was gentle and meek, he says. 
Uh, but I'm pretty bold at a distance. And he basically will say it in the, in the next couple of verses, he says, look, don't make me be bold face to face. I, I'm going to have to deal with this face to face, this sin that's going on in the church. Don't make me do that. Um, but I wanted to point out that our culture, our call out culture is usually at a distance, right? We usually are calling out people that we don't personally know. We usually are calling out people that we uh, we don't have a face-to-face -face relationship with. Uh, notice that Paul's approach is to be uh, is to be gentle and humble face to face, um, but he's entreating them by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. The meekness and gentleness of Christ, I think, and I think Paul is saying here, is sort of the controlling method of of dealing with sin in the church. Yeah, does it need to be called out? Sure. Uh, but it needs to be done meekly, gently, with humility, recognizing that you yourself are subject to those sorts of things yourself, dealing with your own sins first, rather than dealing with your brother or sister's sins first. Call it call out culture is a way, it seems to be in our culture today, seems to be a way of proclaiming yourself to be virtuous while the other person is, is somehow sinning in an, in an infraction. And I think that self-justification is a dangerous thing about call-out culture. And I, one last verse, and I don't want to step on what Elvis is going to talk about this Sunday, but this is the passage Elvis is going to be preaching out of. The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. The point of correction is gentle restoration. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, our point is not to kind of make ourselves look good. Our, po our point is not to kind of puff ourselves up, but always our point has to be gentle restoration. And, um, and I would ask, um, when it comes to calling people out, shaming them publicly over their sins, is that more or less likely to lead to repentance and restoration? Um, when it becomes necessary is when every other method has failed, right? When, when gentle, meek, restor restorative practice has failed, then there needs to be a public calling out. And, and what Paul will say in tomorrow's devotional is that uh, you're handing them over to the devil with, the, again, still with the hopes of, of restoring them. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. But um, do we call people out publicly? Uh, I think as a last resort, as a last resort. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that Jesus came meek and gentle and help us to be meek and gentle in how we deal with one another. Help us to remember that we are sinners ourselves and that we would prefer to be dealt with in a meek and gentle way. Uh, so let's deal with other people in a meek and gentle way as well. Um, gently restoring, gently uh, guiding, and with a full rec recognition of our own uh, failings, our own biases, and, and our own uh, challenges. Help us to be humble. Lord, I pray for those who are going to celebrate recovery tonight. Please bless them, male or female. Go into those two groups. Please bless them as they're working through their hurts, their habits, and their hang-ups. Lord, I pray for you to gently restore uh, every person, Lord, who is in, in a struggling uh, frame of mind right now. Lord, we love you, and we trust you, and we trust ourselves to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.